Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, we're into September and a new month means a new monthly prompt in the Mixed Media Facebook group. Now, I'll give you the prompt in just a minute, but we've decided this month that once again we're not going to do weekly challenges. This month, Nina and I might be having some time away, but we're still going to hopefully be doing videos. But we just want to make sure that if we need to create when we are away, then we keep it simple enough for ourselves. So the prompt for the month is let's journal. What do we mean by that? Well, any type of journaling at all. So it could be art journaling, it could be collage, it could be glue booking, it could be making tags to go in a journal, journaling cards, anything of that sort. We're keeping it wide open. Now, by way of journaling, I thought I would try something a little bit different. I have so many journals, art journals, collage journals, glue books, I have them all. But I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. And I've got here my bowl with various bits and pieces of fabrics in it. So I'm going to be using some fabric. I've got a stick that I had already cut off a bigger piece, just a piece that was lying on the ground in the garden, giving it a little sand. I have my stones here. These just always give me a bit of inspiration by way of colours, different stones, give me different inspiration for different themes. I also have a piece of canvas. Now this was cut from a much bigger piece that I have. If you don't have canvas, don't worry, you could use paper. This is just a piece of caddy paper that I'd started to prepare. Uh, I'd hope to actually have this done to show you, but unfortunately I didn't get the time this week. But it could be done any size at all. My piece here is 40 centimetres by 10, which is around 16 inches by 4. And the idea is that I will wrap this around and make a scroll that can be rolled up. And I'm going to journal on one side and decorate the other. So as well as it being a scroll that could uh, hide, if you like, some journaling, it could also be a kind of wall hanging. So in terms of preparing this, I actually tea dyed it. I just cut a big piece off. I used an awl just to pull out some threads. I then simply folded it, stuck it in an old Chinese takeaway container and poured some tea in it. Now, because I had it folded, it's given me these really nice lines on it, which makes it look as if it's something that's been rolled up, exposed to the light on some parts, but not on others. So the exact effect that I was looking for there and very easy to do. I'll also perhaps use some beads, some threads. Don't know if I'm going to add any paint or anything to it, but we'll see. But meantime, let's get going should say I'm also just keeping these to hand in front of me because I want to work with kind of earthy colours again this week because I have a kind of theme in mind, a concept in mind for what I want to do with my scroll. But I'll say more about that, probably change to editing mode here and I'll say more about that as I go along. I had meant to say in my intro that when I took this out of the tea bath, I simply squeezed the tea out of it, scrunched it up, squeezed the tea out, rinsed it under some cold water, pulled it out and then left it to dry just outside, left it to dry naturally. So here I'm just working out how much fabric, how much of the canvas I'll need to actually wrap round my twig, which will become the, the hanger, if you like, but also the thing that I can wrap the fabric around. All I'm going to do now is to start to look out some fabric pieces that I can attach to the canvas. So I am really working with what I would call earth colours. So oranges, reds, browns. I'll also add in some metallic colours such as golds and bronze. My concept for this scroll journal is deep earth. So not that upper surface of the earth that we live on, that we walk on, but what lies beneath, right into the, the centre, into the core of our earth. 
So at the moment I'm just roughly arranging fabrics that for me represent that and once I've picked some fabrics I will start to cut them into smaller pieces because I want to stack some on top of others. So I'm going to have three separate stacks of fabric there, each representing a different layer of earth. I am going to stitch these together, although just before I do so, I decide to just put a little bit map medium down onto them just to hold them in place. So in the layer of the earth below the crust, there is what's called the mantle and it's said that the rocks in that layer glow white hot but if the rocks were cooled then it's said they would be a beautiful green and red just because of the different minerals so I have chosen a red and a green for that first layer just to represent that layer of the earth. And I'm just using an orange embroidery thread, embroidery floss, just to do some very basic stitching. On this first one I will do a very rough running stitch. I am not a sewer, but I like to do a bit of sewing from time to time, very basic stitches. So I will do a kind of square around this one on one of my other layers I will do a line just going across the way and on another one I'll just do a simple vertical line. Nothing fancy at all but it just adds, as far as I'm concerned, to the interest of the piece.
that's done, I'm just going to neaten up some of the edges a little bit. These fabrics will fray and I'm okay with that, but I'm just going to use some 3-in-1 glue just to attach these now to my piece of canvas. I was going to use the gel matte medium, but it takes a while to dry, so just going to use this. A little bit concerned that some of it might show through some of the more delicate fabrics. It might just change the colour a little bit. But by the same token, I'm not really too concerned about that. Now, I did also think that I might stitch round the main kind of rectangle shapes once they were glued down and into place, but decided in the end that might just be a little bit too much. I just couldn't make my mind up about it, so left it. Once these are in place, I'll simply put a piece of uh, greaseproof paper over the top and just use my brayer just to make sure that they're properly flattened down and getting as much contact with the canvas as possible. So while that dries, I'm now going to turn to the back of my scroll journal. I could obviously write direct on the canvas, but what I decide to do is to attach a piece of paper. So I have some very old squared paper here. It actually has some singe marks along the edges, so I'm just going to cut a piece to fit. And then I'll just take... Uh, some ink and go around the edges with it. In fact, I don't even get ink. I just take the blending tool thing, there's ink on it, and I just very roughly go along the edges with that. And then again, I'm just going to use a three in one glue to put this down because this will dry much quicker than the gel matte medium. Now, I did get asked about using gel matte medium last week. It was just a glue that I had to hand. You could use Mod Podge, you could use anything else. And indeed, if you were doing this on paper rather than on canvas, you could even use a glue stick. So that's that in place. So I'm now going to attach my twig to the top part of this. I did think about putting a twig at each end so that it could be, so that as a scroll, it could be rolled in different ways. You know, it could be rolled from both sides to meet in the middle, but decided that in the end, I would just have it on this one side. So I'm going to stitch this, but I decided just to secure it further, again, I would use some of that three in one glue just to make sure that this stays in place and doesn't slip out of the canvas. I gave it just a few minutes to dry and what I'm going to do now is to take that same orange embroidery thread and I'm just going to stitch along the top. I don't put it right up against the stick because the stick is uneven so I just bring it down a little bit and I'm just going to use my awl. I started to try with the needle but the needle just wouldn't go through the fabric. I suppose because it's two layers of quite a heavy duty canvas. So just using my awl to punch the holes and then I'll start to go through. And again, just a very simple running stitch here. Just making them slightly bigger by pushing the awl in that little bit further. And as I say, I am by no means a sewer, but I do like to do very simple things like this. So once that's done, I just get to the other end and then I just put a knot in it. I was going to try and, and just do 
through the canvas but again just because that was so tough I just ended up putting a basic knot in it. I then just put a tiny bit of glue on which will just actually hold that in place. So I was going through my stash and I came across this wonderful bead and to me it, it just went so perfectly well. I was gifted this a few years ago, I've got a few of them and uh, it just seemed to be perfect to go on the bottom of this piece. I also bought this ribbon recently and again because it's got the kind of metallic thread through it, because it's the gold, I just thought this would go nicely because I want something that I can tie the scroll up with. So just roughly measuring it there. I do end up measuring it just in case you want to know the size. Do that in just a moment because I can't actually remember how it ended up. So I've doubled it over there to make it easier for measuring. So there's 12, so 16, 16, 16. So it's about 32 inches in total. And I'm going to attach this to the back of the scroll but double it over. And the way I'm going to do this is. I will glue down my bead because I'm going to sew it in place but I thought just to ensure that it stays in place I'll put some glue on it again just using that three in one glue and as I sew the button in I'm also going to sew in the ribbon. So just checking there that my needle would actually go through that button. And again, just using the same orange thread, albeit it won't really be seen. So there I go, just about to glue that down and into place. And sorry that I'm, I was just at the bottom of the screen there. So putting a decent amount on. Making sure that the, the holes of the bead going directly up and down and, and that really just to me goes perfectly with this. So I'll hold it in place for a few minutes. On the back I'm just going to, you can see where the button is and where the glue is, I'm just going to attach this with a bit of glue as well. Again that same three in one glue and I'll hold it in place for you know a few seconds before I then actually sew it. So it was a little bit fiddly. Sometimes the hardest bit of course is, is actually just trying to keep this in the picture so that you can see it. But basically I've just gone in from behind, up through the bead, needle fell out, up through the bead and in through the top. So that's my thread gone through the bead once. And then I will go over it again just so it fully secures the ribbon in place. Now obviously I have chosen a particular concept, a particular theme for my piece, but this could be done with anything at all. You could stick magazine images down, you could use paper scraps, you know as I say you could make the whole thing from paper. I just thought it was quite a nice way to do a different sort of journaling. As I say I'm calling it a scroll journal and I'm just securing that in place now and then I'll just cut those ends off. So a little bit of journaling now before I do the kind of finishing touches. Obviously the other side is a little bit uneven but that's fine. I managed to write on here okay. So I'm using a sepia ink pen here and I'm just writing deep earth and trying to reflect what deep earth does. You know and it's said that the earth breathes that it sings and obviously in deep earth it glows. So breathing, singing, glowing. And I just go over that 
very roughly. I could add more to this at a future point, but I'm going to leave it at that today. So now I'm just going to use this florist's wire just to make a very simple hanging. I don't want it too long because I want it to be able to tuck in when I actually roll this into a scroll. So just taking one end and wrapping it around, then I'm just going to make it a very short hanging. I just go to the other end, wrap it around, and then I'll just cut the end off. So, of course, Nina will also have a video this week and I will leave a link to her video below. But let's now take a look at the final piece. But first, as I did say earlier, you could also do this on a piece of paper, you know, a piece of heavier watercolour paper or caddy paper like this. I've already started to prepare the background with some old dictionary pages that I put on and then tore off, but this will roll very nicely. So it could be collaged with paper or some lighter weight fabrics could be stuck to it or magazine images. But here's my final piece, my representation of deep earth. So I have my kind of natural elements with that twig, bit of stitching, and then everything from that red and green at the top, going down through the colours of the earth to the glowing hot in the centre, and my bit of journaling on the back of it. I will probably glue that little bit down and into place, but where the ribbon is on, it's quite neat. And I love that button on the front. So I can roll this up as a scroll or I can use it as a wall hanging. Just gently rolling because of course I didn't glue all the pieces fully down. I like them in that kind of tactile sense of feeling them as I roll this. And all I'm going to do is tuck that ribbon in and just tuck it gently into my gorgeous, gorgeous bead. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different type of journaling project and uh, I hope you'll join me again next time. So meantime, do take care. Bye for now.